Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for CarGurus, and this is the updated 2020 Honda Civic Hatchback. Built in the UK and shipped to the US as an alternative to the Civic Coupe and Civic Sedan, the Civic Hatchback provides a sporty look combined with extra utility. Plus, this car forms the basis for the ridiculously fun Civic Type R. But is this the, quote, hottest hatch around, as Honda says? We're going to examine that claim. We're also going to detail all the changes for 2020 and tell you which Civic Hatchback CarGurus recommends and why. So stick around and let's go for a drive in the refreshed 2020 Honda Civic Hatch. Honda offers the Civic Hatchback in LX, Sport, EX, EXL, and Sport Touring trim levels. Every single one of them's got a turbocharged four-cylinder engine and offers a continuously variable transmission, or CVT. But only the Sport and Sport Touring come with more aggressive styling cues, 18-inch aluminum wheels, and the choice of a manual gearbox. My test vehicle is the top-of-the-line Sport Touring with the six-speed manual, no options or accessories, and a price of $28,980, including the $930 destination charge. For comparison, that's $8,250 less than a Civic Type R, and $3,050 more than a Civic Si sedan. Only you can decide whether or not the Sport Touring Hatchback's utility features and available CVT are worth the price premium over the Civic Si. But there is a way to improve the value equation, and that's by choosing the Sport Trim, which is the one we recommend. For $23,680, including destination, the Sport has the same look and performance as the Sport Touring, but not the same level of equipment or the sky-high price. And that's okay. Speaking of looks, this year's styling changes include a new grille, body color crossbars to tone down the fake air intakes and vents on the front and rear bumpers, and new wheel designs. All Civic hatchbacks get blacked out headlights, while my Sport Touring test car also boasts new LED lights. Even though the Civic styling's been on the road for several years, it remains polarizing. Whether it looks good or not depends on lighting, angle, paint color, wheel design, trim level, and even your mood. No doubt the design is compelling, and you'll never mistake a Civic for some other kind of car. But is it good looking in a traditional sense? No. Inside, the Civic is far more conventional in terms of design. For the compact car segment, the materials reflect quality, and this year all Civic hatchbacks get extra sound deadening materials that make the interior quieter, lending the car an added sense of refinement. New trim panels also debut for 2020, and starting with EX trim, the car also includes an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat and leather on both the steering wheel and shift knob. All versions of the Civic hatch except the LX also get a new passive keyless entry system, and in versions with the continuously variable transmission, remote engine starting is now available. My Sport Touring test car has everything Honda offers for the Civic hatch, and the car is quite comfortable with good thigh support and a proper driving position. Leather seats, heated both up front and in back, help to justify the Sport Touring's price tag, and dual-zone automatic climate control helps to ensure passenger comfort. This version of the car also has a four-way power front passenger seat, and while that's certainly thoughtful, I'd trade the power adjuster for a manual seat height adjuster in a second. The Civic already sits pretty low to the ground, and so raising that right front hip point would be preferable. The rear seat is roomy enough for adults, and soft front seat backs help to ease the pain of the longer limbed. However, there are no rear air conditioning vents, and with black leather and all of this untinted glass, they're necessary. As is true with most hatchbacks, cargo volumes sound bigger than they seem in real life. Honda says there's 22.6 cubic feet of cargo space behind the back seat, which is almost impossible to believe even if you remove the two-piece cargo partition. After all, that figure is just a Miata trunk's worth away from a Volkswagen Arteon, which has a cavernous trunk. Frankly, I don't really know how they're arriving at that figure. Fold the back seats down and the maximum volume is 46.2 cubic feet, which sounds right. Back inside, the Civic offers excellent storage thanks to this lower tray under the console, another tray forward of the shifter, and this fantastic multi-configurable center storage console. Look, it even holds a giant water bottle, which makes the Civic hatch perfect for people who take their hydration seriously. This infotainment system is agreeable too, except for the terrible voice recognition technology, which misunderstands commands at least half the time. Standard on sport trim and higher, the infotainment system includes a 7-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration, an 8-speaker stereo system, and more. 
Move up to EX trim and it adds satellite radio, text messaging support, and a more powerful USB charging port. My Sport Touring test car includes a navigation system and a 12-speaker premium sound system. All that's really missing here is a tuning knob, but controls on the steering wheel make cycling through the 12 radio station presets easy enough. Honda Sensing is also standard on all Civic hatchbacks and it includes a long list of driving assistance and collision avoidance systems. During my testing, the lane keeping assist system lacked refinement and the adaptive cruise control suddenly braked the car for no apparent reason. So yeah, Honda's got some work to do on that front. Irritatingly, this car also lacks a blind spot monitoring system. Instead, you get Lane Watch, which uses a camera to show you what's on the right side of the car. How do you see what's on the left side? Well, you're on your own with the help of the side view mirror, of course. Now, as far as crash test ratings go, the Civic Hatchback gets good scores from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, but the standard headlights rate poor in terms of their performance. As I mentioned earlier, every Civic Hatchback comes with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Displacing 1.5 liters, it makes a little more power in sport and sport touring trim, generating 180 horsepower compared to 174 in other Civic hatchbacks. But to ensure maximum output, Honda recommends premium fuel for the sport models. A CVT is standard in LX, EX, and EX trim levels. Sport and sport touring get a six-speed manual gearbox with a CVT serving as an optional upgrade. If you get the CVT, the sport also boasts paddle shifters on the steering wheel. For 2020, Honda actually expands the availability of the six-speed manual gearbox, now offering it in the top sport touring trim level. That flies in the face of modern convention and earns Honda two thumbs up from driving enthusiasts. When the car is equipped with a manual gearbox, it makes its peak horsepower 500 RPM lower than with the CVT and generates more peak torque, but later in the rev range and across a narrower rev band. While I'm a fan of manual transmissions and not CVTs, I can't say the one in the Civic hatch is particularly satisfying. Clutch travel and shift throws are long, and the gearbox itself doesn't have the satisfying engagement of, say, the close ratio unit in the Civic Si. In fact, based on my recollections of driving the Civic Si, I think it remains the better driver's car. In addition to its more satisfying manual transmission, the Si makes more power and it's tuned for superior handling. The Civic Hatchback Sport, by comparison, feels softer and more disconnected. It's undoubtedly quick though, and because it's quieter and more refined than the SI, it's easier to live with on a daily basis. And let's face it, fewer and fewer people know how to use a shifter and a clutch pedal. The Civic SI only comes with a manual transmission, making the Civic Hatchback Sport the logical alternative for people who like to drive but have no idea how to shift their own gears. Once you acclimate to the clutch pedal and gearbox, the Civic Hatchback is enjoyable to drive. Responsive steering makes the car fun to fling around corners and curves, but the seats don't do a very good job of holding you in place. There is some excess body motion and roll, but the Civic hatch remains utterly planted and on your intended path, and the brakes remain quick to respond at all times. This car isn't a guilty pleasure either. The EPA says you should get 32 miles per gallon in combined driving, and I average 32.7 miles per gallon on my testing loop. Good thing, since it requires premium gas. So, is this the hottest hatch around as Honda claims? No, within the Civic Hatchback's competitive set, that distinction still belongs to the Volkswagen GTI. And the GTI isn't the only worthy alternative. The Hyundai Elantra GT offers better value, the Mazda 3 Hatchback offers better design, and the Subaru Impreza Sport offers standard all-wheel drive. So, even though the Civic Hatchback is worthy of your consideration, and it is a remarkably sophisticated small car, it competes in a segment full of appealing alternatives. Be sure to read my full review of the Honda Civic Hatchback at CarGurus, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us here at CarGurus, thank you very much for watching.